when you hit the 300 pound that mentally scared you. Today I'm bringing you behind the scenes of my eight week weight loss check-in. A lot has changed over the last few weeks and it's about to get real. The good, bad, ugly, and downright craziness of this weight loss game. So sit back, relax, hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and follow me on this journey to lose 100 pounds. Honestly, there's temptations freaking everywhere. Mm. Mm. So Lisa, so yesterday we had like a emotional come to Jesus type eight week check-in. And it was like two hours. It was amazing. There were tears, there were everything. And there was so much excitement. And I went to go and download the recording and there was nothing there. <laughs> so <laughs> while, yeah, while we can't recreate all the emotion that was around it, I wanted to kind of take this opportunity to go through the highlights of that session. Cause I think it's important that people um, know what's kind of been happening. You know, there's a lot of people who've been kind of watching my journey, the ups, the downs, all of that. And you have been such a huge part of uh, the success that I've seen over the last two months. So I'm going to give it to you. So the first thing is I want you to talk about where you were October 18th when we first met and then where you are today. I had started my original weight loss journey June 15th. I had been just struggling, you know, not staying committed, ups and downs. And I had been kind of doing a lot of like, you know, crazy diets and like, you know, quick fixes. I would kind of typically last for about two to three weeks, maybe a month if I was lucky. And I was frustrated. I was so focused on seeing the scale go down. That's all I wanted. And wow. today, today there's a lot has changed. Um, previously, I had been able to kind of lose like, I don't know, anywhere from like 10 to 12 pounds in two weeks. Um, I find that now, while the weight loss is coming off slower than when I was doing those quick fixes, I find that I'm doing things for me and not for a specific event or something that's happening in my life. It's, it's literally become part of who I am, if that makes any sense. You're recreating your own identity. One of the things we went over yesterday, which and this is why I do my eight week check-in, because four weeks is almost too soon to see any real true movement. It's that week six to eight where the magic starts to happen and where things start changing if you're putting the work in it. And yesterday we went through, when we initially met, why losing your weight was so important to you. And I'm going to go over it again. One of the first thing was your why you're like, I want it for your health and you want to be there for your girls. When you hit the 300 pound, that mentally scared you. You wanted to look and feel the way you did when you were at, like you felt your best. You said you lost yourself. You wanted to feel beautiful and attractive again. And your struggles were your procrastination, your willpower, your exercise, no self-control, self-sabotage. And you were patient. Check, check, check. <laughs> <laughs> So all the struggles that you went through with the procrastination, not an issue. Your willpower, not really an issue. Your exercise is like, I don't even ask you about it anymore. <laughs> I don't worry about if Naya's up at like 6 a.m. anymore, getting ready to go downstairs and hit the Zoom class. It's, and it, it's, it's crazy because especially when it comes to the exercise, if we're talking about even October, right? Like I remember literally I would wake up because, you know, we said, okay, I'd have to wake up a little bit earlier. Normally I was waking up around 7.30 before I would wake up an hour early, about 6.30. And I would literally negotiate with myself, putting my feet on the floor, putting them back in bed, putting my feet on the floor, pushing the, the, the alarm to give me a little bit of snooze for like 30 to 45 minutes. It was ridiculous. And now it's funny. I think it was just a couple of weeks ago. I realized I'm like, you know what, with the kids doing all the stuff, like in the mornings, it's just a little bit busy. And I'm finding that, um, I didn't either have enough time that to get my workout in, I'd have to kind of stop or, you know, it would get pushed a little bit. So it was crazy, but I was like, I need to wake up earlier. I need to start waking up at 545 in the morning, 545. <laughs> which is huge because uh clearly I'm not a morning person or I didn't think I was a morning person but yeah like just making those choices to put myself first um has been a, a big change big right. change and that's what's again like you've now realized that you know there's all this other stuff happening in life but you've made the commitment and the time to put yourself first so 
if I had to ask you what, what made you so committed this time versus the other times versus when you did your challenge in June or July Mm -hmm. and you were so committed this time, I mean, outside of me, (laughs) which is like, (laughs) you're a big part of it. I'm not even going to lie, but, um, I forced you to like get up at 6 a.m. in the morning, but that was accountability. But what was the difference between then and now? Because we talked yesterday a bit about your YouTube channel being your accountability piece. Yeah. So when I started the YouTube channel, I decided like I was going to really try um, to lose the weight back in June. I was kind of using YouTube as my accountability piece. And I was like, okay, well, if I post this and, you know, so many people are watching, I'm going to have to do it because I said so. That actually didn't work at all, by the way. (laughs) Right. But whereas it's like somewhere in the last two months, I've taken responsibility to hold myself accountable because I can't look, I've just realized like, I can't look to other people to determine my success or determine what I'm going to focus on. I know even like with Steve, with, you know, um, my family here, it's like, I remember I would get upset right? And I'd be like, oh, if he would eat differently, then you know what I mean? I would have lost this weight already. You know, I would have been eating differently because I didn't have to cook for the kids and da da da. da. But once I stop that, it's like Steve's going to, you know, do what he's going to do outside of the house, (laughs) picking up McDonald's, whatever. And they still, they'll still order stuff in, but it's like, it's a choice that I've made not to engage in that. (laughs) Sometimes I do. Like, so with that willpower. Yeah, yeah. There, there, honestly, there's temptations freaking everywhere. Um, but it's like I can't, I can't keep expecting other people to support my weight loss or keep me accountable. It has to be me, and it has to be for me. And I think maybe that's the mind switch: is that it's, it's not for this or that. It's literally just something that I'm actually starting to enjoy, and I want to take care of me. I've been taking care of people really for the last twelve years since you get married, right? Like I just. I want to take care of me. So the one thing I tell all my clients is, especially with like, I find with moms, I use a lot of moms who have kids or they're a caregiver of some kind. And the one thing I tell them is like, when you get on that plane and they go through the drill of like the way the bird, this plane's going down and those masks drop, what do they tell you? Put it on yourself. You can't save your kids. You can't save your husband, your mom or anybody else. If you don't have your mask on and are breathing, to be able to take care of anybody else is if by putting yourself first, you're probably a better mom. The other thing is that's happening in the last little while is like, I'm realizing I'm leading by example, right? Especially when it comes to the girls. If I'm sitting around all day, watching TV, eating, whatever, like this is what they're learning. Because I think my mentality before was that healthy food sucks. Like it has no flavor. It has no nothing. And maybe I was projecting. I actually remember you telling me the first week (laughs) you were on your nutrition plan. You're like, Lisa, nothing has flavor. Like this sucks. I can't do this. There's no flavor in this food. I'm dying here. (laughs) Seriously. And now it's like, no, but it's true. Like, and I think I project that to the kids and then they're only thinking chips and chocolate and stuff like that has flavor. And it's like, "Mm, no, stuff can taste good when it's healthy too. Preparation has a lot to do with it too, but yeah. So this morning I ran into a problem. I forgot to pack my um, stuff for my lunch. And so I literally just put together some quinoa that I had leftover from um, another night's dinner. I put some great fruit, some great tomatoes in there, zucchini, um, and then I have uh, turkey bacon. So that is my lunch for today. Oh, did I forget anything? No, that's my lunch for today. And this is two portions that I've made um, so I can have it again for tomorrow, which will be the end of the week. So, okay, that's like a quick 10 minute uh, meal that I just prepped. So funny, right? Because I totally took me back to our first week conversation of <laughs> I'm like, you want me to eat what? I, I mean, like the mindset shift. And we went through it again, like part of our conversation yesterday is that your mindset, I started seeing it the week of the girl's birthday. That was kind of we, we kind of went through your limiting beliefs of you know starting and stopping and and you were ready to just like I did 10 out of 13 days and I was ready to fall off and I didn't care. And we're like, hold on, hold on, bring it back. And then that was like a whole mental shift. And then that became the start of everything else. Because then there was, again, the girl's birthday. You're like, I had beer, I had pizza, I had wings, I had tequila, I had cake. And then, (laughs) 
And then you had your chef at work, make a bunch of chocolates. And it was that moment there that I saw when we talked about it, you're like, I just took one and I had my flavor and I was good. Old Naya, and I have a video of, of me like literally eating that chocolate ball and just savoring it and enjoying every piece. I'm gonna put it right here. I'm at the office and our chef just made these incredible chocolate. It's like, um, it's like a Ferrero Rocher, but like a zillion times better. Sorry, that's my colleague in the background. Anyways, I just had to show you because I'm counting this as one of my carbs for today. I get like two to three times a week that I can splurge a little bit. So this is absolutely a splurge and I'm enjoying, look at that. Oh my gosh, every little, every little bite of that. I'm enjoying. Oh, so just watch me eat it because it's, and I'm not gonna feel guilty. Why? Because I can. Mm. <laughs> it was so good and old naya would have had not less than like six to eight of those things honestly and i didn't and I, it was actually at that point that i had realized it was like almost three to four weeks that i had had no chocolate and i didn't even notice chocolate and stuff like that i would at least have it a couple of times a week before that and so i realized that i hadn't had any chocolate and instead of gorging on it, which I probably would have done before, it was like literally enjoying every bite and it actually tasted good. And it reminded me that like, there's a lot of times when I'm sitting, watching TV, you know, be eating chocolate and I wouldn't even taste what I was eating. It was just the, I want something in my mouth. And this one, it, like I can still taste it now. Does that make any sense? Like when yeah. I and I'm like, mm, I can taste the walnuts and the chocolate and the caramel, and, like right now. There's a connection with food, right? It's like where you, like, oh my God, there's this cake because it's kind of like when we binge eat, right? Like the whole example of like Christmas is a perfect example where you have the full on spread and you're in your head, you're like, I don't know when I'm going to get a meal like this again. Yes. So you're, you're like, like, gonna get, like, dessert like this again. So you just like binge and you're just eating and you're not even enjoying the flavor of it. But now because you've limited and changed your mindset and nutrition, that when you do have it, like, I'm going to enjoy this. The other thing that I'm like super proud of you for, because again, one of the things I say is that nothing good comes from your comfort zone. No growth happens there. Because when you live in this cute little box with your blanket and your pillow and your favorite movie, it's comfortable. But then all of a sudden you have to like kind of open the door and go outside. And you're like, I don't want to go outside. I'm good here. Up there. <laughs> you have managed to step outside of your comfort zone. So I want you to talk about what it was like for you to step outside of your comfort zone of doing a easier workout and then pushing yourself to the next level. Okay. So I remember when we first started, it was like, again, that mid October time. And you were like, okay, like, because I'd signed up for Beachbody and like basically Beachbody is like the Netflix of workouts. And you had said, okay, Naya, I want you to maybe start with this workout. And it was the 21 day fix. I looked at it and I was just like, mm mm. That is not going to happen. I remember, I literally, I remember this conversation. And I was like, Lisa, are you crazy? <laughs> you want me to do what? You, I, how am I going to do those kind of planks? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? And I was like, I remember actually saying like that, that workout is for fit people, people like you, not people like me. <laughs> okay. I was literally thinking, I was like 300 pounds on those knees. Oh no. <laughs> anyway. And I was scared though. And I didn't even like, I didn't even attempt it. I just watched like three minutes of one of the videos. And I was like, mm -mm. I think two, three weeks ago, I was like, you know what? I think it's time. Okay, so I just finished uh, day five of the 21 day fix. This is good. This is good. Last week I did four days. So now I'm on day five. I had a couple of little blips last week, but I'm back up and going and day five was insane. I'm wearing my running shoes. Now um, it's easier on my knees. I was having some knee problems. I was really scared to do the 21 day fix before, but what, this is week four, I guess, of like my reset. I can't believe how in such a short amount of time, I'm more confident about the workouts I can do. I remember when uh, my coach first suggested that I do the 21 day fix and I was like, uh, sorry, no, uh -uh, I'm not, that's not for me. I'm not ready. Da, 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 da. And now it's like a month later and I'm doing the 21 day fix and I am actually like full on doing it. I did the burpees, 
right? Modified, but I did the burpees even. So I'm finding that I'm stronger. My arms don't have, like before I had like a little jiggle at the bottom and it's going away now. It, it's, it's pretty cool. I'm just starting to see things tighten. This morning I weighed myself. I'm down one pound. So now I am exactly 270 on the dot, which is awesome. I'm doing it. And I'm like doing the whole thing. Funny, because sometimes I'm doing these moves and I'm like, this reminds me of what I see Lisa on her Instagram doing. <laughs> like, do I look like Lisa? <laughs> yeah, like it's it's cool because I would not have done that two months ago. So what was it like for you stepping out of that comfort zone, out of that fear? Well, initially it's like, you're, again, you're scared to do it. You're thinking, oh, I don't want to fail. I don't want to hurt something. I don't want to look stupid. I mean, nobody's around, but still, you just have all that going on. And then having done it, it was really hard. Like the first time, second time, probably for like the first six or seven days. But as I kept on repeating it and getting comfortable with the moves, figuring out how to modify it so that it was better for me, and even slowing down my pace at some point, I realized I can literally just go at my own pace and do what's comfortable comfortable for me but I'm doing it. It wasn't about perfection. It was more about like, I'm, I'm actually doing this. I'm still proud. I'm still proud of myself for actually doing something that I was literally just completely against before. When we talked about different things that were, you were doing in your life or weren't doing is you the fear of failure. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's been a lot of things, right? Like we started based on weight, but it has translated into so many different areas of, of my life and kind of my perception of what I can do versus before where it was always like, I would like to do that, but I'm not ready. I would like to do that, but I would stop myself because of fear of failure, fear of not knowing what I was doing, fear of looking stupid, whatever the case may be. And now it's like, it's, it's not, can I do it? It's more like, how, how can I do it? I it's love when you say the but because there's so many times I hear people say, but, 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 and I'm like, that but only exists in your head. Yeah. You can do anything you put your mind to. Obviously, I'm not going to say, hey, you had a heart attack. Let's go work out tomorrow. No, but let's modify. Let's take out the butt in our conversations. Let's take out the I can't in my conversations. And you've taken out all those negative excuse words yeah. in your vocabulary now that you're just like, not but or and now it's like, okay, how am I going to do this? My mindset, which is the biggest thing, my mindset is is not only changing me, it's, it's helping to, to change them. Yeah. That's so big. Again, you go back to the kids and it's like, your kids are sponges. They watch every move you make, everything you say, everything you do. So you being able to create that more positive energy around yourself and use more positive language as opposed to, I can't and button, but and mom's making excuses. So I can do it too. As much as we think they're not everything we see do, like they see it all. And that's how they end up reacting to and they think it's okay because mom does it dad does it right you're completely setting the example for your kids so let's really go back and talk about uh your true eight week check-in which was last week <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so last week was not a good week okay I had uh dental surgery so I had like um the, my top molars it was like a three-hour surgery both sides combined and um my recovery was, let's just say it wasn't great. It was painful. Like I couldn't chew at all for well over a week. What actually happened was I wasn't able to work out. I got really like in my head about not working out and I didn't feel great about myself. And Lisa and I had our call last week and she was like, okay, how's everything going? And I was like, I don't even want to have this call. Like I was just in my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this has been a terrible week, la la la. And she's like, okay, so how are we doing on the weight? And I'm like, well, I lost a couple of pounds, but I'm still mad. And she's like, tell me about that. She wasn't going to let me off the hook. So now I'm going to pass it to her. <laughs> so she was honestly, I, girl, I love you, but you were miserable as like <laughs> last week. And I'm like, but why? I'm like, but you lost two pounds. This is what you want to do. And that's when we started digging in and realized that it wasn't about the scale anymore. I was disappointed in myself because of the way I had lost the weight. Because I was literally just drinking shakes and soup. I felt like I, I, I was cheating. I don't know. I just let it get to me. Like we literally had the Oprah like aha moment last week. Yeah. Like it was a true 
through a week, aha, be like, it wasn't about the scale anymore. It was really about the mindset shift you had been in because when was the last time Naya did something consistently for eight weeks? Before I would have any way to lose a pound, two pounds, three pounds, five pounds, whatever, like count me in. I'm going to try it. I had lost weight, but I was really angry with myself for not doing it the right way. And I think there was a part of me that was missing the consistency, just missing my routine of working out in the morning. I remember the first day right after the surgery, I tried to work out and I was like, oh my gosh, this is okay. The pain hadn't set in yet. The drugs were still kicking. <laughs> and I was like, okay, this is great. This is awesome. I did like half of a workout and then started feeling dizzy. And then the doctor called in to check in on me and she was like, you need to stop working out. You don't want the, the incisions to tear. You need to relax. And so that's when I, I kind of stopped. And it was just like, I missed it. I miss doing that for me. I miss going downstairs and having my me time. And I just started to get like antsy. <laughs> That was the mindset shift. And that was when I realized I'm like, it's not about the scale anymore. Initially, like, yeah, okay, that's the goal, but it wasn't just about the scale. You were completely changed your mindset as to the importance of it was having in your life and the impact it was having in your mental state of mind. People, as you were last week, like, oh, I lost two pounds. I'm here. I just won't work out. <laughs> I know people would have thought I was crazy. <laughs> But what I really want to talk about that we did yesterday was we talked about your weight loss and your true success. And I wish we could recreate that. No, uh, no, but I'm still getting even I'm a little emotional now. It's crazy. Um, so for the eight week, Lisa had me do an exercise where I went through all my uh, weigh in journals and my first weigh in journal was June 14th. And I weighed in at 286.4. And all of this time, I've been kind of focusing on me having started in the 270s, when the truth was literally there staring me in the face. I'm not sure whether it was denial or subconsciously, I didn't want to see that I had been close to 300 pounds. But this exercise with Lisa really did give me a better picture of where my journey began and where I am now. Sitting here and I'm like, Oh, I think I've lost like, I think I was thinking like a, a 10.4 pounds. And I even posted it on my Instagram. I was like, oh, 10.4 pounds, like I think last week or something like that. And I was thinking, okay, you know, I'm getting closer to 11. And then Lisa was like, no, 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 no. Let's literally, let's put everything in here. I'm going to calculate everything for you. <laughs> And she was like, do you realize? She's like, you have lost, I think it was 18.4 pounds. Or was it 18.4? Yeah, 18.4 pounds. And I was like, what do you mean? I'm sitting here thinking I've lost like 11. And she's like, you went from the 280s to the 260s. That's almost 20 pounds. And I got so emotional. I can't even tell you because it just, it freaking blows my mind. Even, even with that 100 pound goal over the course of the year, I'm not even thinking about like, oh my gosh, I'm going to stop in June on June 15th. Like that's not even that's not even a, a thought in my mind. I want to do more for myself. This is, anyway, I just, I can't even. Guess what? <laughs> what? Guess who weighed herself this morning? It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, I, I weighed myself this morning and I'm now 267.4. So I've actually lost 0.6 pounds. Since we did our weigh-in fry. Oh so let me hear this now. So you're back on your exercise every day yes <laughs> you're eating again what like real food real food and I was afraid that because I had stopped eating like drinking <laughs> fluids I was gonna gain weight I'm now. actually losing weight yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday yesterday when we ended our call I said I want you to set a goal for end of December where you want to be Yes. My goal was to get to a solid 20 pounds of weight loss. And I was at 18.4.6 is gone. I have one pound left. One freaking pound. One pound. To hit by December 31st. 10 days. 10 days to lose one pound. I can do this. You can 100% do this. And the best part of all this is, is that you committed. You didn't say, I'm going to start January 1st. You no. didn't. Everybody does is like, okay, I'm going to wait till January. I'm going to get to the holidays. I'm going to do all that. And you're going to put it off. Yeah. Try to build your good habits now yeah. to go into the new year and you're ready. 
Like you're rocking. I am so, oh my God, I am so. I'm actually 20% of my total goal. Like how the hell did that happen? You know why? You committed. You said, I'm going to put me first. I didn't give you the motivation. I didn't give you the commitment. I gave you the tools, resources. I held you accountable. But you can come in every week and make up every excuse in the world of why you didn't do something. You did this. This is what feeds my soul is when I see my clients be so successful. It's something that they committed to. Like, oh, stop. (laughs) You didn't even realize yesterday. No. It was literally like yesterday. I'm like, Naya, what are you talking about? 10 pounds. I'm like, maybe in like the last seven weeks. But since you started, yeah. that fear, that fear is kind of gone. When I think about like, there's a, there's quite a few things that have changed. Obviously my weight is, you know, a, my biggest priority, but it's like, even in terms of my finances, I'm trying to educate myself more on finance. Started investing in stocks. I'm starting a business. Things that I wouldn't have done before, I'm all in now. And the one thing that we talked about at the very beginning is that your confidence level wasn't at your best. And it's so funny because I see you, I've always seen you as such an outgoing, confident person. <laughs> we need to hear you word. I was like, really? Mm-hmm. Right? But it's what we show on the outside versus what we feel on the inside. Yeah. And that was the major shift, right? Because on the outside, I like, and I looked at the most confident girl I know. I was like, shit, this girl's like rocking it. She's like YouTubing it. And she's like, great mom. Mm-hmm. She's outgoing. But the inside wasn't real. The inside, you're like, I just hope people don't look too closely and see the freaking cracks because they're there. And now I'm like, look, watch, because I'm going to do this. Right. Like, but it's for me, it's like, I I'm, I'm stopping thinking about, you know, other people's thoughts and opinions and things like that. And just getting back to me. Yeah. The judgment of others. Yeah. being It's hard. Like when you open up, it's like things start coming to you. I don't know if it's the universe or what have you, but it's just like, shit, where did that come from? You're like, oh, and it's not until you sit back, you're like, oh, because I did this mm-hmm. and I started my successful journey and I become more open and I'm more committed and I'm accomplishing more. All of a sudden things are opening up because your mindset's changed, your inner confidence has changed. That things that you've been closed off to before are now just kind of appearing to you. Let's go through the measurements. So your first weigh in on June was 286.4. Then you weighed in in November and you were at November 5th, you were at 275. At that point, you had lost 11.4 in 23 weeks. But now, so from November 5th to December 18th, you lost 7.6 pounds in six weeks. And to put that in perspective, in 23 weeks, you lost 11.4 pounds. But here's the other thing I want you to take note of. 23 weeks, you lost eight inches. In six weeks, six weeks, you lost 8.25 inches. Shut up. That's really good. So when I'm thinking that it's it, like, it's not going as fast as before, the reality is, is that it's going actually really well, especially in comparison. You lost more inches in six weeks than you did in 23 weeks. The That's- weight hasn't been as much, but because you're building more muscle and it is true what they say, literally muscle burns fat. So in total, you are down 9 Teen freaking pounds since June. Ooh. Six weeks, you accomplished more in six weeks than you did 23 weeks. And the thing I'm hearing, which I freaking love, exercise isn't a chore anymore oh my gosh but it's funny because when you put it like that you're like no like you really are changing like I I really am changing and it's working and I'm moving forward and almost 20 pounds if you took out 20 pounds of fat literally like put in front of you 20 pounds of fat like think how much layer there is on your knees your joints your muscles your sleep your energy right plan to get to like that 20 pound number by December 31st. I've already started thinking about what I want that to look like. I think I'm going to add like an extra, um, even 10 minutes onto my workouts. Right. And go from like the th- <laughs> time when I said, Naya, like you can kick it to like 40 minutes and you're like, no, 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 no. It was the 30 minutes. You were like, remember, cause I started doing like 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes. And you're like, now nah, you can go to 30. What <laughs> you want me to do? What? Are you telling me you're now just like, you're telling me as your goal 
you're going to commit to doing 10 extra minutes? Girl, I could tell you by your hair to do that four weeks ago. <laughs> Listen to that. Listen to that. That brings me like so much joy. And the best part I like this about this whole thing is 2020 has been a shit year. Completely shit. For a lot, um, quarantined, grounded, can't go anywhere, can't travel. But you didn't let that get to you. If people want to just learn more about you, learn more about your uh, one-on-one coaching sessions or any upcoming things that you have, how do they do that? So my coaching business is called Rise Up to Shine. And my, the whole thing about it is just, you know, the Phoenix. It's a fictional mm-hmm. character, but from ashes, it rises. And sometimes you need to hit kind of bottom to rise up and become your best self. Like I said, 2020 has been shed. <laughs> And things we made to set out in the beginning of the year didn't quite happen for whatever reason it was. So I give you guys the tools and the guidance and the support you need to be able to crush those 20 to 21 goals. Yeah. And it can, be, it can be weight loss, starting a business, building self-confidence, having more time for self-care. It can be any goal that's important to you that you want to achieve. And you can reach out to me on my Instagram page on Rise Up with Coach LC, or you can email me directly and I will put the email address below and uh, you can connect with me that way. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for taking the time today and just being like such an amazing tool and support system that I can use to, to really reach my goals. Okay. So guys, if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, comment below, (laughs) do everything that you know you need to do um, to make sure that you continue to follow this journey because clearly it really is just starting. We're almost at 20%, which is amazing. And um, I hope that you guys will follow, um, continue to follow me on this journey and definitely hit up Lisa. She's an amazing support system um, for whatever your goals are. Much love as always, and I will see you soon. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Be sure to hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, and turn on your notifications so you don't miss an episode. And make sure you creep the struggle on Instagram at Naya Plus Life. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Be sure to hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, and turn on your notifications so you don't miss an episode. And make sure you creep the struggle on Instagram at Naya Plus Life.